Okay, so today we're going to talk about the infamous Captain John Smith. His life, his explorations, his cartography, and the possibility that he was the first European to ever visit the Penkeer area. So I wanted to preface by saying that much of what we know about John Smith is taken from his writings called The True Travels, Adventures, and Observations of Captain John Smith, which was written in 1630. To say that John Smith was known to embellish in these writings is actually an understatement. For many years, historians have debated back and forth about how much of what is written is actually true. There is actually a very extensive article online titled, Was John Smith a Liar? that documents all the different things he has written and how they measure up to historic fact. That being said, many of the things John Smith wrote about in his life seem to be true, and there's no doubt that he led an amazing life and is perhaps one of the reasons why the colony of Jamestown, Virginia succeeded. So hopefully in this talk, I will be able to separate some of the facts from the fiction. So the first thing I want to do is give you a little bit of background on John Smith's life. He was born in January 1580 in Lincolnshire, England, although we don't know the exact date. His parents were George and Alice Smith. The family lived in a modest home on a farm, and John spent much of his early life working on that farm. Every day would have consisted of repetitive labor, such as plowing, sowing, planting, felling, and harvesting, all of this being done before John Smith turned eight years old. At the age of eight, John was enrolled in a petty school in Alford near his home. Although this relieved him of some of his farm duties, it was no easy task either. His day consisted of a four-mile walk to school on an empty stomach, a 10-hour day of studies, and a four-mile walk home. In 1592, when John was just 12 years old, his father sent him to the King Edward VI Grammar School about 15 miles away. John lived and studied there from 1592 to 1595. It was here he began to learn and study about becoming a soldier. When John was 16 years old, his life suddenly changed with the death of his father, George. His mother remarried and moved away, and the farm was left to John. There's actually no record that John ever saw his mother again, and there is at least some evidence that John, John didn't approve of the marriage, and it created a rift between the mother and son. John attempted to live on his newly acquired farm and became self-sufficient by reading countless books and attending to the farm. But the farm life just wasn't working out for him. The more John read and studied, the more he had ambitions of riches, gallantry, and glory. And it seemed that even from an early age that John Smith had dreams of becoming a world traveler, goals that he would eventually accomplish. In 1600, when John was 20 years old, he became a soldier and a mercenary in the army of King Henry IV of France. John set sail for the Mediterranean. There is one story he wrote where he said his ship kept encountering bad weather. Soon the passengers on the ship said John was a bad omen and they threw him overboard. He swam to the nearby island of St. Mary where he was rescued by a crew from another ship that and then he continued on his journey. Here you can actually see a depiction of this event where John Smith is thrown overboard and um, saved on the St. Mary Island. However, this account is a bit suspicious given that there were no islands in the area at that time and no record of any island being called St. Mary. So whether this actually happened is questionable. In any event, John Smith ended up on an island, a ship called the La Roche, where him and the crew captured and looted another ship near Greece. The bounty was sufficient enough for John Smith to have 10 years' worth of an average workman's salary, basically the equivalent of half a million dollars today. So if you get half a million dollars, you're maybe not set for life, but you're doing pretty good. John Smith continued to look for glory, was for promoted to being a cavalry captain and fought against the Ottoman Turks in the Long Turkish War. Here we have another depiction of John Smith, and you can see him on top of this hill here. He's doing signal flares for uh, as part of his service. 
After a battle, John was injured and left on the battlefield where he was captured. Being that John was a Christian fighting against the Turks, he was sold into slavery. So while there is no question that John Smith was sold into slavery, the battle he mentions fighting in where he was injured simply does not exist in the historic record. It's possible that he was either confused about the date of the battle or was, in fact, captured under different circumstances. While John was a slave, he was marched around and given a wooden instrument to shuck corn. According to John, he was whipped and beaten during this task. At some point, he finally had enough and saw an opportunity to escape and turned around and beat to death the guy who was holding him captive, stole the guy's horse, and fled. Here you can see a depiction of that, where John Smith is beating his slave owner to death. John Smith also claimed that while he was a slave, he was given to his slave owner's mistress to be a servant, and they both fell in love. I personally tend to not believe this story. I guess people can make up their own mind about that. In any event, after John's escape from captivity, he rode he made his way across what is present-day Russia and eventually arrived back in London in 1605 after traveling over 2,000 miles on horseback. So now at the age of 25 years old, John Smith has experienced more in his life than most people would have in three lifetimes. But John wanted more, and he was ready to begin a new chapter in his life, one that would bring him to America. So I want to give you a little bit of a very brief background on the American mainland colonial exploration up till this point. Native Americans had been on the mainland since 16,000 BC, and as many people know, there's evidence of the Lenape, Lenape, Lenape Indians being in the Pencator area and up on Iron Hill. Unfortunately, there's no written records from those days, so we have very little information about what transpired during those years. As far as European exploration goes, in 1492, Christopher Columbus came over, but he never actually landed on what is today the American mainland. In, 15, in 1498, John Cabot explored present-day Cape Cod in Massachusetts. In 1513, Juan Leon landed in Florida and briefly explored that area. In 1524, Giovanni di Verrazzano sailed up the East Coast and probably landed in uh, North Carolina for a time. Actually, I've been to the spot where Verrazano la probably landed. It's on both banks in uh, Emerald Isle. In 1585, Sir Walter Raleigh came over and founded the Roanoke Colony. However, as most know, the colony ultimately failed and the people who lived there simply vanished. So up to this point, that is essentially it. There was no other European exploration of the area. I did put Henry Hudson on there, but that actually wasn't in 1607. It was in 1609 um, after John Smith uh, came here. So now it's 1606, and England wants to try to have another try at colonization of the Virginias. They form what is called the Virginia London Company. Essentially what this company would consist of is a bunch of rich individuals who would invest money to explore new areas. The money would be used to build the ships, supply the settlers who plan to go on the explorations, and offer those people land in the newly explored area. In return, the investors in the company would reap the returns, the resources the land had, and the settlers would be the company's employees. So of course John is one of the investors in the Virginia London Company. Not only is he an investor, but he is one of the people who plans to go on the voyage to the new company. So a charter is given by King James I and three ships set sail for the new colony carrying 105 passengers and 39 crew. There are actually no men on this first voyage. The ships set sail in December 1606, and they had not been at sea very long when John Smith got himself in trouble. Smith was arrested and charged with mutiny on board the ship and was put in confinement. He was set to be executed by hanging as soon as the ships reached the new colony. 
It is unclear exactly what Smith did to be charged with mutiny. However, when the ships arrived in Virginia in April of 1607, they opened the document naming the new colony's government, and John Smith was one of the uh, governing council uh, of the new count, uh, colony. People should have probably realized that you're, if you're an investor in the Virginia London Company, you get to be part of the leadership if you go on the voyage. The colony had no choice but to spare John Smith's life and let him be on the council. There might be a reason for a lot of the animosity between John Smith and the settlers. When reading John Smith's writings, you get the sense that he thought he was more experienced than many of them, and he was likely to be very arrogant and had a low tolerance for ignorance. But the truth kind of was that John Smith was more experienced than many of them, and they were in a situation where ignorance and lack of experience would get people killed. So in a lot of ways, I can understand John Smith's arrogance. The settlers soon selected Jamestown to be their settlement location and built a fort on the site. However, far from finding gold washed up on the shore or diamonds growing in the trees as some of the investors had expected, the settlers dealt with endless hardships. Here you could see a depiction of the original fort in Jamestown from a period map. I believe this was done in 1608. All right, so here are some of the hardships that the settlers of Jamestown faced. The settlers were not prepared. Many of the settlers who came over on the initial voyage were upper class and not cut out for the endless daily manual labor that required them to survive. Food shortages. So the settlers soon hunted out all the game that was in the area and were unable to grow produce due to the swampy nature of the ground. Uh, they experienced many attacks from Native Americans. Many of the tribes were understandably uh, upset and they saw the settlers as a threat. Only two weeks after landing, the settlers faced a Native American attack that left one settler dead and about a dozen wounded. So they settled in a swampy area. So the fact that they settled in a swampy area was a huge problem. Constant mosquito issues that carried deadly diseases such as malaria. Many of the settlers actually got sick and died. And on top of that, there was a fire at the fort, and the fort burned down. So they're just experiencing all kinds of issues. 